Yahweh, God and Creator, we surrender to you first as we call upon the words that Yeshua told us to speak as he taught us how to pray. We embrace this holy opportunity to engage within your spirit trusting and knowing that by holy grace you extend protection over this time to reveal and make known the awesome wonder and glory of your presence and all aspects of your being engaging within wisdom, clarity, unity, proper order and alignment unto you. We breathe as one, for the very nature of our breath rises from your spirit. And we know that each and every thing of blessing that emerges within our sight upon this earth comes first from your spirit to be manifested in such a way that it might bring blessing upon all your children throughout creation and not held bound by any one group or individuals. May we be blessed to see this prayer extend out of the whole of your planet, this earth, that we call home, that we might remember that the provision is your spirit manifesting life through this blue ball, this planet, and all people within, all creatures, all beings, all manifestation of life and blessing coming forth from you and you alone. We also rest in trust in knowing that anything that is not of a blessed nature is as Yeshua taught us, that anything of a corrupt, corrupt nature, anything of brokenness that rises before our eyes is merely spiritual in nature, rising from the spiritual realm, the order of principalities, and we are blessed and poised within the holy recognition of your divine power within us, given unto us by Yeshua, as he extended to us the keys to the heavens so that we might do greater things than he as we walk this earth. May we return to this memory. In returning to this memory, we honor the work which Yeshua had accomplished. We do not forsake it. It is when we walk through blindness. It is when we walk through justification and we separate ourselves from the holy realization that it is your spirit, poised, able, and present to rise in every breath if we allow for it. We embrace you and are in awe of the love that you extend through us, and we trust and know that your spirit is poised even in this moment to deepen the recognition of your love for each and every one of us, and for all people we encounter. May we be refined within the process of walking the path of your presence, the awesome depth and wonder of your love. I trust and know that as we engage more deeply within the path of your design, that we will find ourselves freed from the things that might limit this expression that we will find ourselves deepened in the ability to look upon situations in compassion and not be governed through sympathy. That we would look upon things through wisdom and clarity, not confusion or frustration. May we be deepened through patience, forbearance and understanding, and freed from, again, spiritual impatience or frustration o lebro con dolor come a prata sviscerete e snacalo nella beamo o tore calo nel vecchio e sta si piano lo com here i surrender that this prayer might be governed by your spirit this time of seeking may emerge to bring 
recognition of your holy and divine grace, the awesome wonder of your glory. And as we reach into the deeper things that have risen throughout the years within grace healing and the awesome gift we have received, and I say we because there are many that have walked the different grounds within service to grace healing, and myself, I have been honored to witness many things that God has accomplished by God's power. Not just the instrument that is a religious body or a church or an instrument that is grace healing or any fraternal organization that has been formed, but it is God's spirit and God's spirit alone that manifests blessing within our lives. We are poised at this time within grace healing to make great leaps forward and to extend God's love to people in the places that they have forgotten what true divine love is as opposed to the human love. And as we've spoken to this in the past, I've shared the difference between what we've come to accept and understand as love, small l, small o, small v, and a small e, as opposed to divine love that is capital L, capital O, capital V, capital E. And I know you've heard me say this before, but we have reached this place where we have actually allowed ourselves to say things like love hurts or love stinks within rock and roll music that we hear. You know, the songs that come out say love stinks, love is pain, love is hurt. And that's the love that we defined within our youth. And we saw it through abandonment. We saw it through different experiences that we started to define and form that, oh, love comes with suffering. Love comes with spiritual addiction. Love comes with these different spiritual influences. And we begin to embrace this concept of love, small l, instead of relinquishing the definitions we feel we hold that define love, those definitions that do not hold attributes that reflect God. And even as I've shared with people over this weekend, how much do you trust God? Are you honestly willing to come before God and take the things you think you believe and know and say, God, I relinquish what I think I know, and I I rest it before you. I give it unto you completely. And in the past, I've I've always had this experience where God has amazed me and stunned my limited human mind when beautiful things manifest, instructions, healing, restorations, renewals, all kinds of different stuff rise in front of me, and I stand in awe of God, and I am blessed to learn as God manifests these things in front of me. But even as I learn and I experience this ground, I come to my night, and one of my processes through the evening as I engage to enter sleep is to honestly return to God even the things of blessing. To say that even as you taught me through this day as I was witness to bless and love my brother or love my sister or pray over this individual and witness what you did, I would rather give it back unto you so that I might not corrupt it. I would relinquish my holds upon what you have given me even in the form of blessing. Because I trust that you can hold it pure within you to manifest according to your design not how I might alter it within my thoughts, words, or actions. Because realistically, we can look at every experience within our walk, and we can begin to justify it by certain measures that we have walked upon the earth, certain articles that we have read by spiritual teachers or guides or, or just basic authors for magazines or whatever. We say, oh, that kind of resonates with me. Well, one or two sentences of the article may resonate with us, but all of a sudden we find ourselves altered and changed by the additional words that were not godly within the article. And we embrace segments of that article that we may have read that aren't purely of truth, but they kind of align with what we think we believe. 
are we trusting in God enough to say that even this, that I encountered this day, that would justify my standing in this world, even these thoughts that I have been given that justify the wrongful nature of my steps and start to convince me that the things that I thought were righteous remain righteous, I now return them to you. I relinquish my hold upon them to become pure as an empty vessel so that your presence would be known through me, not the knowledge I think I hold. And breathe deep. And as you surrender into this place of sleep or rest, restoration, renewal each night, what is it that we are willing to do? Are we willing to seek God more deeply in each and every day as we come to the day's experiences through our work life, our everyday life of meeting the needs of others, whether you're a mother or a father or a son or a daughter or a worker in a corporate setting or whatever you're doing, are we honestly willing to return these experiences before God with an honest, contemplative, meditative moment to recognize that God is within you? And again, as I said earlier, not at some great distance. God is not in the heavens looking down upon you, waiting for you to make a wrong move or judging the very move you make. God is within you, poised and ready to greet you if you choose the attributes of God's Spirit to flow through. Within the integrity of that choice, you will find the nature of God's Spirit rise within you. And as we shared last week, the ten great words, you will find certain attributes of your being reflecting the nature of God, not the lesser spiritual influences that diminish that. You won't even find yourself acting in ways that are governed in spiritual nature because you will sense and know the spiritual influence before you engage it within you. And as I mentioned, we, Ina and I have both been blessed as we've been traveling in Maine and then traveling up here in upstate New York and, and sitting with people that we are just so deeply in love with. And what a gift it is to fall into God's love for so many remarkable individuals that truly reflect the desire to love and know God more deeply. Not just to possess and lay hold of things upon the earth, but to honestly be in a state of pursuit pursuit of God in the experiences they encounter each day. Even as I was sitting with one of my brothers this weekend, and I and I were present in prayer, just to, to allow for tears to flow forth as we were honestly recognizing a love that is undefinable. To sit in the presence of God and honestly have but one desire, to know God's presence, to be present in that moment above our thoughts, words, or actions. To sit in absolute silence together and allow for God's Spirit to evidence His design and will for that moment and her holy compassion and love in that moment. And it just brought forth tears, recognition, peace, order within our thoughts, clarity within our minds, and a deepened awareness of God's love. But let me remind you, <laughs> if any of you have children, you may have heard this line within a movie, life isn't just about eating up butterflies and pooping out rainbows. So the more you come closer and closer to God's love, the more you become God's presence, the more you will see things around you that are not of God. For God's presence reveals all things before you that are not of God, not so that you would embrace them and hold them bound here upon the earth, but so that you would do the greater things that Yeshua spoke to, that you would set free, as we spoke last week, the captives, those things that we encounter that are not of God. Anything that does not align with the nature of God's spirit has immediately revealed itself to be something of a spiritual influence, that which Yeshua named to be a captive. 
Because some people have called up and they ask, well, well, how do you know when you're under spiritual influence? It is extremely simple. If you encounter any sense, thought, or awareness, or action within your own person that does not align with the nature of God and you have somehow justified yourself into this place, then you have already verified to yourself that you are under spiritual influence. Whether it be by your own willfulness or by ignorance through spiritual influence, if you embrace, function, and walk within a spiritual nature that does not align with the attributes of God, that is what Yeshua described as the captives, to be set free. That is how simple it is. It's not some big theological thing. It's not some doctrinal teaching that will take you to a degree level understanding or a master's degree or even a PhD in theology. It is as simple as that. If you find yourself walking upon this earthly journey and embracing behaviors, thoughts, feelings, or emotions that are not in alignment with God's nature, meaning attributes, the specific characteristics that reveal God, then you are showing to yourself spiritual influence upon your thoughts. And one of the simplest ways to identify this is just the simple aspect. You've heard it a thousand times from your friends, family, and you've probably uttered it a thousand times from your own mouth. You hear them say, oh, I get so confused. Oh, I'm so confused. Oh, this is so distressing. Oh, I feel so depressed. The moment you utter these words, you are speaking to the spiritual captives that Yeshua named, that we are here to set free. And please understand, this could not occur before Yeshua came into our midst. This was not able to be accomplished until Yeshua connected all heavens as to one. And this is what I meant by we would be reaching into the deeper understandings because you, ple you need to understand this human walk is not about us humans. We become so self-centered in the fact that we are human, we are thinking that it is only about this human journey. It is not. It is about when Yeshua entered unto the belly of the dead and ministered unto the dead, when he took from Lucifer the keys to the heavens, in other words, the ability to create. This specific journey, each and every single one of you were tapped into the perfect wisdom and knowledge of God's presence before you came to be human, before you were birthed, just as David said. Before you formed me within the womb of my, mo my mother, established the nature of my flesh and knit my bones from the dust of the earth, you knew me perfect. And sin attached itself unto me within the womb of my mother. These things are what they are speaking to. And again, Stephen, I repeat this over and over again. Yahweh, forgive them for they know not what they do, for it is the spirits within them that govern the nature of that which they do. And I offer thanksgiving that you're allowing me to restate this because this is the very key that Yeshua gave to me in the visions that I received that said that mankind is walking on the periphery of the power that I have given them because they have lost sight of the order of the heavens. They do not understand how they interact with one another. And it is spiritual things that I teach you as he spoke these words. Yet you don't even understand the things of the earth. So what happens is people are trying to make decisions within their lives and they're not measuring the nature of how they're approaching the decision. They don't understand that they're encountering anxiety because they feel anxiety within them, but they don't stop, pray, and breathe into God's presence and release the spirit of anxiety with absolute clarity to know that God is there to receive the spirit of anxiety, captive held within you with absolute clarity and surety that you release the spirit of anxiety and, as Yeshua said, receive God's presence within this place so that many of like kind do not return. But we are not perfect. 
we are not perfect upon this earth. We were perfect in the presence of God. So we must remember that even as we walk this life, Yeshua spoke another prayer. Yahweh, free them from the familiar spirit, for they might know you first in all thoughts, words, and actions. Because mankind kept returning to the familiar nature, even when Yeshua would heal people. Within a matter of weeks or days or whatever, they might return to the nature of their behaviors, the spiritual influences that they embraced. And he would see them return to the familiar nature because they weren't grasping the spiritual things that he was teaching them. As he says to you, I, how much longer must I be with you? I teach you these things of a spiritual nature, and you do not understand the things of the earth. Listen unto me that you might hear and know the very nature of your actions as they are governed by the attributes of God or the spiritual influences that you embrace. Breathe deep. The Spirit of God, the breath of God within you to govern the very nature of your actions. And he spoke these things to people prior to entering the belly of the dead, which meant the breath of God's Spirit was in them. This is important to understand. Because even then, when Lucifer held the keys, they still held the breath of God's Spirit within them. Seek within to know the very nature of God's presence within. Call upon my name. Yahweh Elohim. that you might know my presence and be guided in the steps that you take to reveal the nature of my glory. What is God's glory? God's glory is the manifestation of all things blessed. So if we ain't pursuing God, we're not going to reveal the glory. If we're pursuing the fears and anxieties we hold within our lives, that is what's going to evidence for people to see. Just like when Yeshua said, Live not of the flesh, meaning the soul. Remember that word is in Aramaic. Defining flesh means the soul, the connecting point from spirit unto body. It actually connects spirit, soul, and body. It is the transition between soul and body. So he said, live not of the flesh and set aside the things of the body. So if you're living of the flesh, that means these spiritual captives governing the nature of your being upon the earth. That is what your body will evidence. Corruption, sin, death, and suffering. However, if you relinquish and set free the captives governed within the flesh, set aside the desires of the body, live as the spirit, meaning the purity that was known before God, before you were sown within the womb of your mother, then living as the spirit, your body will manifest glory. In manifesting glory, it will reveal in front of you things that are not blessed. Not to beat you down through subjection. But to empower you to know that it is God within you, that even as corruption rises before me, it holds no power over me. It is God's love that will prevail in this moral moment. And God's glory will be known as I submit myself to God, not the experience around me. Not the angers, fears, sadness, death, depression, grief. So then we traverse the human experience, remembering that we came here specifically to release these spiritual captives from the order of principalities, so that as they rise within us, in a nature attribute that does not reflect the nature of God, that is when we have been shown. This is our call to the royal priesthood. We relinquish and set free the spirit of depression, and if it is the spirit of depression, we are freed instantly. However, if we can't free it, we can't seem to rid ourselves from it, then we do the prayer that Yeshua spoke to us of. 
when two draw together in the fullness of agreement in the love of God's presence, it is done upon this earth. Because now we're dealing with something of a demonic nature. Because what have we done? We've sat in front of a TV in our living room. And we hear people convincing us that you are under the spirit of depression. You must take this drug. You must take that medication. So we embrace the demonic, meaning that which governs bodies of people, and agree with it. Yes, this depression I feel, I must medicate it. Instead of following Yeshua's word, it says, everything of corruption you see manifested upon this earth is first spiritual in nature. What if you hold the power to set the captive free, and when you cannot engage the fullness of that captive's release, you draw to another one in the fullness of agreement, pray its release, and it is loosed and freed from you, it doesn't hold any hold, then the two of you stand in agreement to know that only God's love is resident within that place, I will guarantee you that you will find freedom from what you once called your anger, your anxiety, your confusion. These things are not yours to possess. God is yours to reveal to the captives within so that they return into God's loving embrace and are poured back upon creation according to his design. Not the way they were known prior to Yeshua's arrival upon this earth. As envy, starvation, suffering, anger, jealousy, envy, when they have been named and known as these things, we are the ones perpetuating their form in that way. And I would ask that each of you might consider meditating before God's presence each night as you breathe deep and honestly trust God enough to not only relinquish the things that you saw of suffrage, not only relinquish the captives that you have encountered, but honestly return unto God the blessings you have received. Whether it is physical abundance, whether it is knowledge in abundance, or spiritual healing in abundance, return it unto God so that God can magnify it. To be increased back upon you. For what reason? the reason to make God's glory more known. Not to raise you up in the eyes of humanity, but to increase God's glory, glory upon glory upon glory upon glory, so that all people would recognize one thing when they encounter you. Not you in increase, but God's glory through your very presence in their midst. And again, as we come together within grace healing, we offer thanksgiving to know that this week ahead is going to reveal awesome glory for God's grace and we will be sharing next Monday with, Monday with some beautiful things that are coming forth. And I want Ina to share just whatever God is leading upon her heart relating to God's glory and those and the love that we share and just trust in his grace. And I pray that um, I'm going to open her up right now because for some reason, well, there it is. Okay, there we go. Are you there? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, And I'm sorry, I had a problem with my phone. So si quería debía si no me ayudan. Tata si quería debía si si yo tenía debía caer debía sanama. Thank you, Abe, for this time that we've all engaged in one, that we do seek your face first. Thank you for the words that have been spoken upon your precious son's tongue, the speech from the heart that you've moved him, that those the ears of your children receive fully, deep within their hearts and spirits, to move into that which they've been called, to be awakened to a greater awareness of you within them, to recognize all around them, deepening such a relationship with you that it isn't about us. It is not about them. It's all about you. 
setting the captives free, knowing who they are in you, how deeply loved they are. And even in this time, Yeshua, that you've had us here in Upper New York and throughout the region, even in Maine and Vermont and Boston, and, and it's going to go all over in how you're going to move in grace healing and those of the support and, the, and those that you're going to bring. It's been amazing to see the love of God in this region and throughout. And it will be an exciting time for us to share what is about to come forth and the things for which I've had on my heart for over 20 years and Larry for 30 is amazing. And we thank you, Yeshua, as we have gathered just now and the words being spoken that we lift them up to you and give offering of thanksgiving and love for all that you are doing in our lives. And I pray for each one that is engaged in on the prayer and those that have never been on the prayer before to receive the fullness of his love, to just receive and open without hindrance, reservation, and even with that to release even of those captives that we've even we're just talking about any hurts or pains or heaviness, burdens, unforgiveness, loss. And as doing so to receive his very presence, even in the words being spoken, deep within their hearts and spirits, Yeshua, let them hear these words deep within to stir them to awaken to a deeper love, and that's what great healing is, is to express your love and who you are. We thank you for this time that we have had this evening for so much more is to be unveiled and revealed, and also upon your children that are on this call, of the things that they are walking in, the things that are going on in their lives. May they just continue to seek you first in all that they do. It has to do with their families, loved ones, relatives, their their business, their call in their lives, their purpose. We just give you praise, honor, and glory. And thank you for again for our time and sending out your children and all that they are to go. Cover them, protect them, watching over them. May the joy of who you are rise up within them and know how greatly they are loved and how much we truly love them as well. We love you, we praise you, we worship you. In your most precious holy name. Yahweh our God and Creator, Yeshua, Sanctifier and Redeemer, Abun, the breath of your spirit which resides within us. We trust you, praise you, and worship you. Amen. Amen. And I pray that each of you are blessed in a deep, restorative, and holy sleep as you find the freedom to let go of the thoughts you hold within your mind, the considerations of things you've encountered through the knowledge of man, the experiences upon this earth, and truly trust God to receive everything you relinquish unto him, including blessing, because that allows God to increase the impact of that blessing back upon you according to his nature, not in veils you may have known prior to this time. We love you. Look forward to serving you in the days ahead and pray blessing upon every single breath you receive. Take care and be blessed. Yes, we love you dearly. Have a wonderful week.